Hello and welcome to Rajya Sabha Television. You're watching The Big Picture with me, Frank Pereira. The Vice President of India and Chairman of Rajya Sabha, M. Venkaya Naidu, addressed a public lecture on the importance of legislatures in Delhi on Monday. <coughs> the Vice President made some very important observations on the functioning of legislatures, their performance, challenges being faced and the way forward. He elaborated on the prevailing misconceptions about uh, legislatures in the minds of the people and media. The Honorable Chairman of the Rajya Sabha also listed 10 suggestions for wider consideration, debate and decision on the way forward to improve the functioning of the Parliament and the other legislatures in our country. On this edition of The Big Picture, we will analyse the Chairman's speech on the importance of legislatures. Joining me on the programme today are D. Raja, MP of the Rajya Sabha, Aditi Fadnis, Political Editor at the Business Standard, P. D. T. Achari, former Secretary General Lok Sabha, and uh, Chakshu Roy, Head of Outreach, PRS Legislative Research. As always, I'd like to begin with the lady on the program first, Aditi Farnes. You know, as far as the Vice President's uh, speech today is concerned, what were the takeaways from a journalist's point of view? Firstly, I'm not a lady, I'm a reporter. <laughs> uh, secondly, <clears throat> there were uh, some pretty important things that he said. Uh, some pretty controversial also. Uh, one of them was that... Uh, that <clears throat> Quorum is not necessarily the responsibility of the ruling party, that all parties have to make sure that the quorum is there for legislative business to be passed. Second, he was very candid and very forthright about where the judiciary's role should start and where it should end, because the balance of power gets disturbed if, uh, if the judiciary's, uh, judicial overreach is seen um, too much. <clears throat> Third, uh, he made some important uh, points about... Uh, strengthening research, about generally improving the quality of debate. Uh, he harked back to the, old, to the golden days of parliament as it were and remembered and recalled some of the wit and the, the humour that uh, we used to see in parliament. Uh, he also made some important remarks about the functioning of the state legislatures. But those remarks have to be left where they are because this is a very sensitive issue. Uh, state legislatures are entitled to run as they think fit for the number of days that they think fit. So maybe uh, think the number of days, minimum number of days on which legislature should meet uh, needs uh, some consensus. Sure. Mr. So Raja, <laughs> let me bring you into the picture. Now, you know from... As someone who represents the apex legislature in this country, as a member of parliament, what were your takeaways? Firstly, the vice president uh, is the chairman of Rajya Sabha. He is one person who has uh, rich experience of uh, being uh, uh, MLA, he was MLA, then uh, he was MP, he was minister, minister holding the parliamentary affairs. And uh, now he is uh, vice president. So he has rich experience. Based on his uh, rich experience, he has come out uh, with uh, many suggestions, many observations, which need to be considered uh, by all the political parties. At the same time, uh, I must underline, uh, he has pointed out certain uh, issues. One, he in fact agreed uh, with us. We have been asking that parliament should function more number of days. Mm. He also agrees with us in that way. He also thinks parliament should function <coughs> for more number of working days. Number two, he stressed the functioning of uh, standing committees. In fact, uh, he gave an idea which can be examined that uh, a member... Uh, who becomes member of one uh, standing committee can be asked of, uh, in case of uh, Lok Sabha two and a half years, uh, in case of uh, Rajya Sabha th three years, so that they can uh, concentrate on issues, they can study issues and uh, problems. So th that is uh, one good idea. And uh, he also suggested uh, quality of debate. Then uh, uh, he talked about uh, various uh, other issues, uh, even about uh, legislations. Uh, he went on uh, to argue that uh, women can excel uh, if they get the opportunity. But uh, so far, uh, uh, the present government uh, has not uh, 
interacted with the other political parties, has not uh, convened a meeting to evolve a consensus on the uh, legislation for uh, providing uh, reservation, reservation to women. Yeah. It is uh, uh, pending, uh, lingering on. Uh, so whether uh, the present government will take note of what uh, the chairman has said in a public lecture, we will have to wait and see. Mm -hmm. We will have to wait and but see. But also called for better understanding between parties on the whole and it said no. that it's, it's everybody's duty to carry uh, legislation forward. No, that is true. It is everybody's duty. But whose initiative? Mm. Uh, the, after all, government should take the initiative. And uh, he also said... Uh, government can propose, opposition can oppose, house can dispose. Let the government propose. The, here, there is no proposal from the government. We have been asking whether government will uh, think of uh, bringing back the legislative bill uh, pr to provide a reservation to women. Okay. Government is uh, maintaining silence uh, on this issue. Okay. Let, let's let's uh, come back to what the price, vice president or the honorable chairman of the Rajya Sabha has said today. Mr. Rachari, I'd like to bring you into the picture. Now, you know, uh, Mr. Rajas raised the issue about, you know, increasing the number of days that parliament functions in a year. I mean, this is a debate that has been going on for some time now. He, but the vice president has very categorically said that, you know, quantity is one thing, but quality also should improve on the whole. Yeah, there cannot be two opinions about that. In fact, you know, the <clears throat> there has been a demand for increasing the number of sittings of parliament. Um, now I think uh, it's uh, about 70 days or something in a year, um, um, uh, which is much less uh, than, uh, than, than actually what is required. Um, so there is a strong case for increasing the number of sittings of parliament. But... Uh, if you look at the state assemblies, the, the picture is much worse and much more disappointing. Well, there, uh, um, I, I don't know the total number of sittings of uh, these assemblies, but they are sitting for a very few days only. Um, so there is, in fact, a need for improving uh, the situation, increasing the number of sittings. <clears throat> After all, uh, legislatures are the most important uh, forums where uh, people's um, issues, uh, people's problems are ventilated uh, and therefore um, in order to do justice to it, certainly the legislature should sit for more number of days. And then the Honorable Vice President has dealt with a, very, a, a whole lot of issues. Um, uh, of course, now the Parliament is going to begin in a few days' time and therefore um, uh, the issue of disruption of Parliament is on everybody's mind and it was very much on his mind when he spoke about the disruption of parliament, that there should not be disruption and there should be smooth running of the house and all that. Well, um, as a chairman, and particularly as the, the Comrade Raja had, uh, pointed out, has pointed out, uh, he is a person who has tremendous experience in legislature, uh, and therefore his concern is well taken. But the point is, what exactly is this disruption? Has anybody gone into this seriously? Uh, uh, so when we talk about uh, the need to um, have a smooth running of the house and so on, then uh, people should actually go into the reasons as to why the parliaments get disrupted um, quite often. Uh, in fact, we have seen that uh, a particular ruling, a ruling party at a particular time, when they were in the opposition, they would uh, disrupt the house. So when they move, uh, then they become the ruling party, then they talk about the need to um, uh, need to have a smooth running of the house. And the roles are reversed <clears throat> when they move to the other side. So this kind of thing happens. Uh, okay, we seem to have lost the line there, but I'm going to take that uh, point that uh, Mr. Rachari is making forward of disruptions. Yes, Mr. Raja, you want, to, you want a quick counter? Yeah. No, disruption uh, is one thing which should be understood uh, properly because uh, all the time uh, there is a tendency to blame it on opposition. But currently what we are witnessing, the disruption starts from the ruling benches also. And they do uh, come from their seats and they do enter into wells and uh, they do start uh, uh, disruptions. Mm. So whom to be blamed? That is where we should understand. If we all think parliament is the supreme body in our democracy which represents the people's will, will 
it uh, which represents the people's hopes and aspirations as parliament members or legis as legislators as political parties do we perform our responsibilities discharge our responsibilities perform our duties as to the expectations of the people and as to the expectations which uh, uh, according to our constitution where do we stand whether we uphold the constitution whether we uphold the constitutional morality that we will have to understand as political parties okay uh, okay you know this issue of disruption uh, the honorable chairman has made a couple of observations you know uh, to discuss and debate he has said his 10 recommendations of those 10 recommendations two of them pertain to disruptions he has said that uh, disruptors must be notified and he has also said uh, there should be automatic suspension of members now these are some you know some suggestions he has put out that we will have to wait and see where exactly this goes I think uh, these are valuable suggestions and you know the members of the Lok uh, Rajya Sabha which form the rules committee of the house will obviously consider on these suggestions and then decide as to which you know way the rules have to be changed to incorporate some of these things but I think uh, overall uh, you know when I read uh, uh, the speech of the vice president there are a couple of things that stood out uh, one was that he talked about quality of deliberations and then when he talked about quality of deliberations uh, he talked about the fact as to that members of parliament need better research and better support to ensure that there is you know quality debate after quality debate he also talked about the fact as to how do you measure as to what you know our legislative institutions is doing so one he said you know how do you measure the effectiveness so maybe he was talking about not just the output of the institution but the outcome that the institution provides then he talked about the fact that as to how can you rank or is there a possibility to rank you know some of those legislative institutions uh, his speech also had special emphasis on the committees uh, he drew upon his experience as a minister and talked about the real estate bill and as to how Rajya Sabha had helped shaped uh, the real estate bill in the way it was and about how the subordinate committee then you know looked at as to how some of the rules were transgressed and you know corrective action one interesting thing that I saw in his suggestions was and this is something that Aditi also mentioned and uh, uh, Raja sir also mentioned was he said longer tenure for MPs on committees mm. currently MPs have a one year tenure by the time they understand the subject they might get rotated out or their parties might nominate mm -hmm. them onto other committees uh, I think what he meant was then if MPs have longer tenure on committees they would be able to build their expertise on the subject and hold the government to account in a much more effective manner sure you know uh, we'll, we'll obviously talk about that you know the committees as such but you know talking about the committees Aditi you know another interesting thing that he mentioned was this issue of perception in the general public and the media he said that the people generally think that Parliament only works when the session is on but they don't realize what's really happening at other times as well but that's not the case parliament actually functions and the role of the standing committees and other committees comes into into being when the parliament is not in session and they work and they sit and they deliberate now how do you get rid of this perception well i'm not sure if it is entirely correct to say that there is a perception of this after all when we evaluate the speeches uh, in our reports that mps are making we know that they're coming out of a deep wellspring of knowledge experience and deliberation it's not something that's just coming out of you know people being tabula rasa uh, yes there is a lot of work that goes on in the standing committees it's uh, in fact it cannot be measured it's a great learning experience uh, much of it happens behind the scenes so we don't we are not privy to it because it's privilege I mean it's uh, MPs are not supposed to talk about what what work they do behind the scenes but you can tell if a person has how deeply uh, an MP has been engaged in a subject from the quality of the speech and I think that's absolutely I mean there uh, anyone who has covered parliament for an extended period of time will be in a position to appreciate that sure yes Mr. Raja no, it is true that uh, standing committees the parliamentary committees or uh, mini parliaments as uh, vice president has uh, said it but the point is the findings of the standing committees are recommendative in nature they are not mandatory 
they do not bind the government government may accept may reject government may accept partly reject the rest so it is rec recommendatory uh, in uh, nature i think this needs to be examined parliamentary standing committees should have some power if we think there are many parliaments that is where the problem lies this should be addressed i don't know whether we can be able to address right now or it will take some time because uh, the vice president has uh, opened up that issue uh, maybe we may uh, look at the re, uh, re look at that issue and see how parliamentary standing committees can be made more effective more effective that is uh, one thing which uh, we should uh, try to understand as far as um, uh, the disruptors uh, uh, issue is concerned already there is a practice in rajya sabha if people enter into well uh, for unruly behavior their names are bulletin their names are mentioned in bulletin that is there this uh, automatic suspension uh, there are rules and uh, one cannot uh, uh, violate those rules uh, the, these are all small things but the larger issues which uh, vice president has uh, uh, spoken uh, that uh, they are uh, uh, with regard to the uh, future of our democracy how we are going to strengthen the multi party uh, democracy which we have today and how we understand the mandate of the people because uh, all right one party can get adequate number to form the government and uh, if you think that is the mandate that mandate should not be contrary to the fundamental positions of the constitution sure. and th that is where the mandate also needs to be understood properly mm. and uh, even s smaller parties uh, regional parties they have the mandate of uh, Uh, people, people of uh, those regions mm. to uh, 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 understand that mandate because uh, regional parties they have been large number of seats in those respective regions <laughs> they come to parliament uh, that is also a mandate right uh, so this mandate needs to be understood in a correct uh, perspective okay but yeah. you know frank yeah. i feel that the standing <laughs> committee represents actually all of parliament represents a grand bargain hmm. you negotiate your way you push for some things which you think in from your standpoint are right you push to pull out some things which from your standpoint you feel are wrong now uh, in the standing committee the give and take that happens i think that needs to be a lot more refined okay it has to be a lot more the give and take has yes yeah yeah chakshu frank uh, i think uh, both rajesh sir and aditi made a very interesting point about committees about the contribution of committees Uh, uh you know i was uh, uh, i was told today that i think the committee on energy sat for four and a half hours today examining witnesses so i think the point uh, in the speech that the vice president was trying to make was the institution does a lot of work but i think the only work that is witnessed is the one which is in front of the camera mm. the background work and the effort that the secretariat puts in and the members of parliament put in in reading for example i know that rajesh sir reads through all the committee documents before he goes into the uh, into that meeting so that prep time that time inside the committee all that's also work that's also work and that kind of gets shoved in the background because people can't see it but there's a reason as to why committees can't be shown because you know it's a deliberative forum and the moment you open it up uh, it will again become that political slug fest that happens there mm -hmm. he also talked about the fact as to respect for rules and are there is there a requirement for tweaking some of those rules mm. so when he talks about conduct of members when he talks about uh, you know compliance and you know uh, automatic suspension and naming as raja uh, sir said so uh, in a tenure which is going to be for the next you know 5 and 1/2 6 years how many of those rules would he be able to you Actually, know tweak, tweak remains to be seen uh, would be would be interesting to see as to i mean uh, these are the points and you know how does he take sure, those points sure forward. he's at least made his uh, mind clear as to what needs to be done and what direction needs to be taken mr rachari you know uh, with changing times the rules also need to be tweaked and changed do you agree with that well certainly there is a need for uh, <coughs> changing the rules 
there is a need to have a relook at uh, some of the rules. Um, uh, and there is a mechanism in both the houses, uh, rule com rules committees, which go into this. In fact, the secretariat prepares the background notes and all that. And uh, then the committee goes into it and uh, uh, amendments are made. Um, so that mechanism is very much there. But apart from that, <laughs> so far as the uh, committee work to which the Honorable Vice President uh, referred uh, is concerned, it's very, you know, everybody knows that parliamentary committees are doing uh, tremendous work. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> uh, in fact, the, uh, the, the effectiveness uh, of uh, parliamentary committees' work can be gauged from the fact that many important landmark bills which have gone through these committees of both the houses uh, have come out in a much, much better shape uh, than um, uh, the, uh, what it originally was when it was introduced in the House. Uh, this can be said about many important landmark bills. Mm. So, uh, committee work is very important and committee, uh, certainly the, there, is a, there is a need and there is a strong case, in fact, for strengthening the committees. Uh, now, how can you strengthen the committees? In what way? In what manner? Uh, well, certainly, uh, the research aspect can be strengthened, as uh, someone, was, someone has referred to it. The research aspect uh, can, be, can be strengthened, uh, so that the committee's work can be more productive. <clears throat> um, and uh, so, Honorable Vice President, it seems, is very much concerned about it, and I'm, I'm, I'm sure that he will uh, take a look at the way in which committees are functioning sure. um, uh, once he begins functioning. Okay, I've got uh, limited time the on house. the program, so I'm um, going to try and... Uh, secondly, yeah. the... Go ahead. Eh? Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah. Please complete the point you're making. Second, secondly, ranking the members as per their performance. You know, they say, uh, it's a new idea which uh, he has given, um, ranking the members. In fact, I would, say, I would think that it is uh, some kind of an uh, incentive uh, to the members. Sure, um, okay. So this should encourage the members to perform in a better way. Uh, in, in the House, and perhaps the Honorable Vice President believes uh, that this will go a long way okay. in reducing right. the number uh, of Mr. Rajari, uh, I'm going to cut you short because I've got house. limited time on the program. I'm going to try and get squeeze in one final comment from Mr. Raja. Yeah. No, I agree with the Vice President when he spoke about the importance of uh, standing committees because I also worked with him for uh, several years uh, in Warm Standing Committee. But uh, Vice President, I do not know, it uh, did not uh, crop in his mind or uh, he deliberately left out that point. Recently, we are witnessing a different uh, a confrontation in Parliament. The powers of Lok Sabha, powers of Rajya Sabha. Uh, certain bills are passed by Lok Sabha as money bills. Rajya Sabha doesn't have uh, any say, much say on mm. that, mm. Uh, practically no say. Uh, then what happens uh, on such matters? Uh, how to maintain a fine balance between Lok sure. Sabha and Rajya Sabha and how to work out a Mr. mechanism? Rajan, I'm going to cut a short time. I have limited time. Yes, Chakshu Roy, close the show for us with, the, with a concluding remark. No, I think, uh, uh, I think the Vice President uh, did not make any apologies about how the House has been functioning. I think in one of his remarks he said that yes, uh, there are some members who are not attending and there are other things. Mm -hmm. He clarified some things. But I think the 10 points that he has left us with, you know, those require more debate and more deliberation, both inside and outside the House. Sure. And I think uh, that's what's going to happen in the days to come as well. All right. On that note, then we'll call it a wrap on this edition of The Big Picture. I'd like to thank all my guests for joining me on the program and putting things into perspective for us. That's it from me. See you again next time.